Hey, <coughs> David, how are you? David, you and I are going to do the show later, okay? Just let you know that. So, might as well get your questions in right away. And uh, now, guys, listen. I'm just going to put a disclaimer in immediately. A disclaimer, and the disclaimer is this: my Wi-Fi is acting up. It's really acting up. I've got two Wi-Fi in the house. They're acting up. Okay, so we're gonna have to put some cases out on somebody. Maybe some cases out on Virgin. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna boycott Virgin very soon. Virgin Airlines messing up the system. Virgin going to Montego Bay. BA going to Kingston. There's a monopoly. British Virgin. Richard Branson all the way in Nectar Island trying to tell us in the UK how to run our lives tax saving. Anyhow, that's just a commercial break for now. But my Virgin is acting up crazy. Talk talk is acting up crazy, you know. So, so um, I'm just putting that disclaimer. So if you see things just shut down, it's not me. It wasn't me. It must be Shaggy or whatever like that. You know what I'm saying, guys? Um, so. <laughs> You need to okay. <laughs> That's a good one. Now, now, David, there are changes which are good, you know, and there are changes which are bad. And you're right. Now, that's a change which should be good. Now, you got me. You got me. It's like sometimes when I say don't go with the flow to people, or I say, man, I'm just going with the flow. Somebody will just say, ah, remember Silburn. You always say. Don't go with the flow, you know. And so I always say, don't go with the flow, which is, which is very crucial, which is very important. We never ever go with the flow, no matter what. We just, we just carry on. And Maxine Bambury, how are you? Good evening, guys. My Facebook lives is. Um, I try to make it as interactive as possible. Um, this evening, I want to make it interactive as possible, and it all depends on the players. And, and and the different players that comes on board will have to play a part in the process. Um, and by playing a part in the process, then you will eat the goods of the land. All right? Yes, Keen, what's up? Um, hey, Joe, how are you doing? Nice seeing you. Awesome. It's always good when you do Facebook Live. You see people from all over the world. You see people in Jamaica. You see people in the US, you see people in the UK, you see people in Timbuktu, and um, I'm just doing some little housekeeping while I'm getting ready and stuff like that. Uh, but as usual, what I really want to talk about is an update on the whole election process, but just an update generally on things and also things that you may also want to bring to the forefront because as I keep saying at all times that we have to create I Sarah how are you Sarah where's our phone call waiting waiting bring 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 where's the phone call bring 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 <laughs> just teasing it um so uh in in all different situations I, I believe that it's very important that we give a different spin and I wouldn't like the word I wouldn't like to say the word spin because when we say spin it's like we are trying to put another uh, spin sometimes tend to be very spinny um, it gives the impression as if to say one is trying to fabricate something one is trying to say something which is not so to the benefit of the listeners or of the errors so therefore, I never like to use the word spin, but I like to say maybe giving a different angle on the news, giving give a, a different perspective on the news. And that is something which is, which is very important that we all should do because most times we are somewhat subjected to the BBC, we are subjected to the CNN, we are subjected to the uh, ITV, and they give out their spin to different things. And then we take that and we accept that and we go to the cleaners with it. When sometimes all we need to really do is sometimes to be a bit more analytic. Now at the same time being analytic doesn't mean to say that one has got the answer, one has got the, the clear um, 
direction because one of the things I always say to myself and I say to people all the while that when I put questions out there and I put discussions out there it is not giving the impression or if you get the impression it's very wrong that I know everything but it is really facilitating a discussion facilitating a different dialogue coming at it from a different angle I always believe in coming at things from a different angle when you come at things from a different angle it opens our mind to really think uh, a bit more um, uh, proactive and a bit more um, different to the typical thing. Hi, Tony Kelly, my birthday mate, uh, and stuff like that. Um, what, I, what I do when I do the Facebook Live now, Lester Gale, Bridget, you're speaking to me in Dutch land. Yeah, Bridget, I, I, I'm, in, I'm in Brexit land, you know what I'm saying? We are, we are breaking away from Europe, so I don't know where you're trying to bring me into Dutch, Dutch land language, you know what I'm saying? We're not into no Dutch land language, we're into... Um, um, we're exiting Europe, man. Well, but you can't exit Europe, really, can you? No, there, there's no way you can exit Europe. You know, um, you're exiting the European Union, but you're exiting, but uh, but you're still being a part of the EU. That is something which is fundamental. You will always be a part of the EU, the the European. I mean, Europe to a certain extent. You know, but anyhow. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce myself again to you. Um, Silburn Sidil here, Silburn SB Sidil, and I approve the messages which will come through. Um, the host of the Silburn Show, the biggest independent TV network. You see, you got to speak things before it happens, but actually, maybe it's happening. You know, I always say sometimes that the mainstream is what you create it to be. You know. The mainstream is what you create it to be. The mainstream is where you put your energies and your soul and your level of reliance on. You know, that's that's what I consider the mainstream to be. You know, so when I say the biggest independent TV network is because I got a big plan, I got a big dream, I got a big vision, and uh, because things only happen when one resolve within themselves and within their minds to make it happen and to make it big. That's why you got the likes of Opry, that's what likes of different person, you got the rise of Richard Branson. Now, yeah, I know I slayed him earlier, but at the same time, that's the whole purpose. Once you're in the public eye, you get slayed. I get slayed and stuff like that. No big deal. That's it's no news, you know. Um and, and that's and that's one of and that's one of the key things, you know. Um so we've got um the general election which is called on June the eighth. Um, which is going to be a major um, election. Um, we are seeing things hotting up. I, I use the word hotting up, and um, and we're seeing now different parties are crisscrossing the country so far. Um, the Prime Minister made the last um, contribution to the Prime Minister's Question Time just last week with Jeremy Corbyn, and that took place. It was fantastic. I don't know if you guys watch Prime Minister's Question Time. But that is good. There's still the call for her to have a public debate um, with everyone. Um, she still declined to do so. The opposition leader, which is Gemma Corbyn, is saying that if she doesn't do that, then he's not going to do that as well. So therefore, what's the sense of this public debate? You're going to have guys like Tim Farrow for the Lib Dem. You're going to have maybe Nicola Sturgeon fly all the way from Scotland. I thought she wanted to break it the UK. Maybe she should stay down there. Um, you're gonna have. You might see some bias and some subjective in my speaking because, of course, we all have a little bias. We all have a little subjective nature, and nothing is wrong with that. That's what makes the world go wrong. No man can really be that objective or be that very right in the middle. And so, you know, we all have a leaning. We all have a leaning, no matter what. Even if one vote for different parties at different times, we always have uh, a specified leaning, and. So let me hear what you say as I, as I, I don't know, I'm trying to sort out this thing here and somehow it's not working here. We all have a, we all have a, a, a particular leaning in all different things, yeah? And, and that's the thing there. Yep, 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 here we go. Here we go. There we go. So, Ian Marks, how are you, buddy? Good, good. Just waiting on a few people to, to join in. And, but before I go, before I go any further, um, what do you guys think about the, the boxing match with Joshua and the great Kakungsa. I can't remember mentioning his name. I need to practice how to spell his name properly. 
I mean, someone just called me a while ago to say, Andrew, I mean, say Joshua is not a, is not a champion, you know, because his opponent is a guy who's at the end of his uh, tenure to a certain extent. And that uh, at the sixth round, when he was hit down, really, at sixth round, uh, at a young man of 27, you know. So one person, a couple of people. So there's different school of thoughts are saying that um, Anthony Joshua is not a, um, a champion or, you know, he shouldn't have really reached that far. Um, what do you guys take on that? Because the funny thing about the, the boxing match last night is that many people were trying to actually get onto the boxing match, trying to actually watch it. And 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 because you've got to actually um, contact or, or pay for Sky or whatever like that, so many people weren't able to watch it. But guess what? The advent of Facebook, my days, man. The advent of Facebook, people were streaming it. People were just putting it before their television. So people were watching it. So I watched actually half of the show live. You know what I mean? I think Facebook was shutting down people at different times. But th there's a plus and there's a minus in everything. There's a plus and a minus of Facebook. There's a plus and a minus of different things because people are sharing it. But what are your guys' thoughts on, the, on, on that match last night? Because I believe it was really... Uh, interesting thing. What I like about Anthony Joshua, and I made it clear in my in my particular um, write up, what I like about Anthony Joshua was the fact that, or is the fact that, and over years what I've been watching him is that he tend to give a message, and he has this inspirational message in what he's saying, and he always somewhat tend to give a, a sort of um, thought that people should think about. Um, so, like last night, what he said is that anybody can do this, you know. Anybody can do this. Anybody can actually come in the ring, and um, and once they believe, you know, once they believe. And it's so funny he said that because uh, I think a quote which I've been pushing on, and I did a recent go with the flow that talks about um, you've got to believe in yourself first before anybody can believe in you. You've got to believe in yourself first because people can see if you have that belief in yourself, and there's that belief in yourself actually that sometimes drives a person. To the next level and is that belief in yourself that also drives uh, a force it drives leaders it drives nations it drives people to do different things sometimes because they believe in somebody who actually believe in himself so really and truly he believed in himself even though he got hit down the sixth round but he believed himself that he can come out of it as a champion and he did came out of it as a champion irrespective of what people say that uh, what his name is is much older and he shouldn't have hit him down in six years. Well, tough luck. Sometimes it's how it ends, which is more important. How it ends, that he is a champion. We are the champion. We are the champion. We are the champion today, or whatever like that. Are we champions? Yes, we are champions. Simple as that. So, so I don't know. I don't know what you guys um, um, take is on on that particular um, match last night. It'd be good to hear your views and and your comments on that. That would be so. Fantastic. Hello there. Also in Instagram land. Hope you're well. That's awesome. Good, good, good. Good. Good, good. Now, yes. So let's talk about the election now. So what we have now is um, the June the 8th election in the UK. There's something also which is, which is happening about the elections. Um, I don't know if you guys have picked that up. They call it strategic. Um, hi, Yannick. How are you? They call it strategic voting okay strategic voting so what is happening now is deals packs and alliances are now being formed in different ways different persons are now forming deals you know they call it deals packs and alliances and i use different sources and when i use different sources is to somehow come back and we look at it and we sort of analyze it and of course with your input as well it makes it much more refreshing um the the 2017 general election looked to set to be as they say, one of a more of a corporation between the political parties than ever before. I think there's a groundswell, and what they sell is get the Tories out. Yeah, get the Tories out. Is that what they're saying? They're saying get the Tories out. That's one of the messages which is coming. The Lib Dems, Greens, UKIP, DUP have all said they stand aside at least in one constituency. Hi, Yanni. So, so some some of the um, political parties are planning to stand aside in some areas like in the green part in Brighton Brighton is a strong green area uh, I think the Lib Dems or maybe one of other parties have decided to um, step aside and just allow the green to run there um, even though at the same time they're saying like like um, Tim found for the Lib Dem he's saying there won't be any deals the Labour Party at the same time is saying that there won't be any deals 
But if you remember, after the election before with David Cameron when he didn't get the majority, and uh, but he had the bigger party at the same time, needed a certain amount to have a government, so he made a deal with, we know, the Lib Dem, with Nick Clegg, right? So circumstances sometimes when it presents itself, politicians or the political class tend to make some fundamental changes. And that's one of the reasons why I always say that when politicians or when parties sometimes make a shift or make a change, sometimes it is not that they are lying, and I say that, uh, maybe because I'm pre pre preparing myself or because of course, you know, as you know, I'm interested and I've my, got my political ambition. We almost have our ambitions. We will say, Silburn, have you got an ambition? Silburn, have you got a plan? Silburn, I know you have an ulterior motive. Of course, we all have motives. I always say you must have a motive. You must have an ambition. No matter what, we all must have an ambition and have a motive, right? It's important that we do that because if we don't do that, if we don't have a motive or, or ambition for something, somebody's going to have a motive or an ambition for you. Instagram land, hi again. Sorry about that slight hiccup there. So we all must have, so so yes, the Lib Dem may say that they don't want any coalition. The Labour Party may say that When you hear, we, we're relying so much on technology, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I had to stop talking for a while because I lost connections. I'd like to ask this question. When I, was there a pause a second ago while we were talking? Let me know if there was a pause. Put your hands up. Raise your hands. Put your hands in the air. Wave it like you just don't care. And if you like the sound being going down, you know. Um, was there a pause a while ago? So why are parties talking about deals? Um, Instagram land. I'm talking politics. Um, I'm talking things that is relating to us. I'm talking things that matters to us. I'm talking things that, whether we like it or not, it will have a direct impact upon us. Hi, Nima. How are you? Good, good. Nice for joining. Thank you. And Caribbean Queen, good for joining on Instagram. Like yeah. David, you can hear me clearly. David, I need your voice and I need your input because earlier today I couldn't come, I couldn't stay. I was just coming from church, so I wasn't able to, to start. So, so why are parties talking about deals? Why are political parties talking about deals? You know, that's a key question one needs to ask. So why are deals being talked about now? Why, why is everybody wanting to talk about deals? Um, we got the, the Donald Trump factor, the deal maker, but still he didn't want to make a deal. Everybody said they don't want to make a deal. But at the same time, they, everybody seemed to want to make a deal. All right? Good. 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 So, Britain first passed a post electoral system means that lots of MPs, this is it, are elected on fewer than half of the votes cast in their constituencies. This is it. Britain first passed a post electoral system, which is what we have. We do not have a presidential system, means that lots of MPs are elected on fewer than half of the votes that is required in their constituencies that's the thing why now at the last election this was in in um the year before 332 out of 650 winning candidates received less than 50 percent of the vote and that is why sometimes people say it is not democracy if you have a government just because they have the major party or the major member of a parliament while they have the majority of a party but yet at the same time when you cut when you add up all the others they do not have the majority of actual the house and that is something of major concern at times because um, a, a, a party or a government which one could have less than half <coughs> and therefore they are the ones that make the um, decisions so so those MPs could have been defeated if all the people who voted against them had gone for the same alternative candidate. And that, that means to say that that would never happen everywhere, but parties who agree on some of the main issues have a lot to gain if they can coordinate their supporters. Now, I don't know if you remember Gina Miller. Gina Miller is um, the lady who took the government to court in regards to the, the, the Brexit and for the government to put the actions or the 
um, bring the case for triggering Article 50 before the House of Parliament. And the Prime Minister was saying that they didn't want to do it. She took them to court and she won. Well, she has now created this sort of um, group or this lobby to field candidates who are pro remaining in Europe, or rather, this is a political term that they say, um, wanting to see a soft Brexit. Personally, I don't know what is a soft Brexit than a hard Brexit. All I knew was Brexit. Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. They didn't know there was soft Brexit on a hard Brexit, right? So, so it's a, it's, it's a deal. Everyone is gonna make a deal now, you know. I my concert, my area where I live in, there is going to be uh, there's a, a strong labor labor um, constituents um, in Lewisham, East Lewisham. Um, the Lib Dem is out there now, um, and the Conservative is out there now. You got the Mad Hatter Party, the Looney Party, you got all these different crazy parties as well. Which are going to vote. There's also a Christian party, the Christian Alliance Party, CAP. If didn't, people didn't know about that, there's a Christian Alliance Party. It would be good if they asked the Christian Alliance Party, do they believe if gay sex is sin? And why I say that is because there are two questions which were put out to the um, Member of Parliament and party leader for the Lib Dem, asking if gay sex is sin. And he said no after lots of deliberation and after lots of prompting and questioning from last year. The Prime Minister also gay sex is not sin. All right? So that is the thing. So a lot of people are actually now um, laying their head to the mast, saying what they believe. But sometimes, do you get the impression that they're only saying that because they want to win an election? They want to appease to the voters. David Thompson, with which other political party would you make a deal with and why? With which other... Um, with which other political party? Are you talking about me making a deal or are you talking about the different parties making a deal? That, that's the thing. Because um, there's always deals being made. And even if, even if a, a government goes in with a, a small majority and not able to get through many things through the House, there are still deals which have to be made with different parties. There are times when the Conservative is joined by Labour in getting something through the house, they are time well that the Labour Party joined with other parties block the government from getting something through the house because there's a there's there's the party line on certain political position in getting certain laws or regulations through, and because of that, there some of them come from an ideologic and subjective base. And as a result of that, what they do is that they say one has got a free vote. If you remember early this week or last week, I spoke about what is a whip. Somebody, a couple of persons contact me and said, um, by listening to the show or listening to this discussion, they understand what a whip is. And many people understand a whip is whipping that horse. Well, it's whipping. When you whip a horse, you try to whip that horse to go down a particular line, a particular road, you, you, the blinkers. And that's what a whip is in, in politics, right? Um, David Thompson, a uh, question, uh, question from someone, guys, ladies. You would ideally represent a conservative seat, right? Oh, David, you're bringing me into the equation now. Right, I, I didn't want to bring myself into the equation. Um, I mean, people who know me know that I'm of a political conservative leaning, um, but I try not to do that too much when I'm having the discussion. But I still believe in being transparent and being open and nothing is wrong. As I said, one can have a political leaning. So therefore, yes, I'll answer your question you would ideally represent a conservative seat, right? Well, it's not about representing a conservative seat because what do you consider a conservative seat to be? A seat is a seat, right? And just because Lewisham is um, presently being held by a Labour um, um, member of the parliament, and ladies and gentlemen, just for the record, and I'm not too sure, but right now, I believe now, once the election gets into, into motion, there'll be no members of parliament. Okay, there'll be none because if recently I follow different um, political um, members of parliament from different sides, um, it's always good to know what different people are doing. And one MP who I know is from an, a, a party changed their status from MP to not MP. So right now, all members of parliament who, who, who are who, who want a seat or whatever like that. They are no longer, like for argument's sake, let's say um, Theresa May. 
Theresa May still remained the Prime Minister. Um, Boris Johnson still remained the Foreign Secretary. But they do not have a seat now. They are now what you call incumbent. Yeah? They have stepped down from their seat and they are no more a member of parliament. Now, on the election on June the 8th, when the results are declared, if they are win, they retain their seat. As a matter of fact, I shouldn't even say they retain their seat. They return the former seat which they held. Okay? Because if they lose, then um, that's it. Erica Tate, I'm off. Erica Tate, I'm off. Erica, can you explain I'm off? Are you flying out? Are you zipping out? Are you off politics or what yeah so so that's the thing there um, there's not I would say a conservative seat I'll say there are seats and when one go for a seat one aim to win that seat with the policies that one present people sometimes vote according to policies within a particular area people vote sometimes according to the political leader and the direction that leader is taking the country so as i said before you got persons right now who will vote for theresa may who are not a conservative because they like the angle where she's going with the country they vote tactically you have some persons who are conservative may not vote for theresa may or i.e vote for their local parliamentary candidate who represents a conservative party because they are not a supporter of Brexit, right? And they do not want the country to go down that route or they do not want what we would say a hard Brexit. They want a soft Brexit, right? I said earlier, I do not know what is a soft Brexit or hard Brexit, you know, it's like skinny, skinny latte, full milk latte, whatever like that. But I understand what they mean. What they say, someone keeping the, um, the, the whole freedom of movement and all those sort of things, you know, but to have those sort of things you still will have to be, have some sort of level of regulation by the EU which if we're going to do a clean break just do a clean break if you're going to have a divorce just have a clean divorce properly get some deals in place take care of your children or whatever like just do it properly because it will just come back and bite you yeah Ian Mark I'd love to see you and Dwayne Brooks form your own party <laughs> You know, Dwayne is my good mate, you know what I mean? I must say that. And uh, we have had discussions in many things. And uh, um, there, there are a couple of things which will come out very soon, um, which I'm not privy to say now as well. Um, so let's watch your space. But no, not, not at this moment for a formal party. But one of the things I do believe in, Ian, Mark, is that there's got to be a time, especially with the black community or persons who want to see a high level of black representation, to somehow consider formulating funds, formulating some resource pools, formulating some economic base that therefore when persons of um, the, the black constituents, I won't say of ethnic minorities or so, I do not believe in the term ethnic minority, I don't believe in that completely. So uh, if I say that, I might say it in a political sense to somehow stimulate a discussion, but I would not say in a sense or describe myself as an ethnic minority because I believe I am a majority. And it's so funny saying that. I'm from Jamaica, born in Jamaica, came to this country as a young man in my 20s, 1992. And uh, I've always known that I was a black man. I've always known that I'm a majority. Everybody that I see in Jamaica was always black. The majority of persons were black. The most white people you see is a few. Went to school with some at the same time, but they were always in a minority. But he didn't call him minority. He didn't call him ethnic minority or white minority. He just saw them as people. So when I came off the plane, then I actually found myself being classified in different things, classified in a box, Afro-Caribbean, black, this, that, 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 that. And I said, damn, you know? And I said, the black guy the ethnic minority you go down into the supermarket you go into the ethnic aisle you go into that aisle and i'm saying hang on a second what's going on here now i'm being labeled now i'm being relegated into some different zones i always say that now you don't accept labels we do not accept labels for labels sake just because political correctness that's why i said earlier at church as i was standing outside i said why not create movements that do not accept the term political correctness because the word political correctness is now affecting people's mindset to a point where people are now confused 
if they do not have a strong mindset and do not have a solid foundation as to what they really believed in in the first place. Seeing that they have grown upon as little children by their parents' parents, we are told, and we are told to be strong ambassadors, to be strong forces, to be good role models for our children. That's what we are told as a parent. You need to be a strong, good black father, black man. You need to be a good role model for you. I always say, and I say this, that people should first be and work towards being a role model for their children first before they jump over their parents' head and seeking role models from movie stars and from different persons whose lifestyle do not line up with what the parent really want. That is important. But then if you say that and you want to do that, and sorry if I'm distracting, but you know, if you say that, then why 20, 30 years later now, you're telling the children who are no adults that what they believed in and what their parents taught them is wrong? So where's the value? Where's the integrity base, which was based in someone's system before? Think about that for a second. Those are things I think about. I value my father, my late father. I value my mother. I value the, the, the foundation that I was brought up in and that base and then to change that just because <clears throat> I'm in a country where they have no solid foundation or the foundation is being shaken by political correctness and now you you can't believe what you normally believe you can't speak what you normally can speak so I say let's create a political anti-political correctness movement that is and you'd be surprised that majority of people think that it's normally a minority sometimes that tried to change with their forces to change the normal flow of thinking the base the foundation and these are persons also an organization and political thinking that are of the same mindset of wanting to change but then I say why change what if I don't want to change my the way I was brought up what if why can't I remain static think about that for a second ladies and gentlemen think about that right so when I say so when so when I say when so when Ian and I come back to that point about the the, the forming um, own party I believe that what needs to be set up is an economic base that if I run for conservative and guys you know me you see me right and people know what I'm doing. Anybody who really knows me knows what I'm doing. I'm actually setting up bases. I'm actually creating platform. I'm actually displaying the splendor of our people with my the Silburn Show, Facilitators for a Better Jamaica, creating platforms. I don't have the time for playing around, you know. Yeah, being a BBC, you know, creating your own sort of base to improve and the betterment the life of your people. So an economic base pooling funds into a system that when you have a, 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 con a black person from a conservative, a black person from a labor party, a black person from a Lib Dem, because what we want to do is populate that house. We want to get on that, those green chairs. We want to sit in, uh, in mayorship. My good friend Marvin Reese, we did the alumni bit with uh, Operation Black Vote. Marvin Reese is labor. He's now the mayor for Bristol directly elected mayor for Bristol for Bristol him right Dwayne Brooks yes I'd love to see him to be the mayor for Lewisham you know actually I've been asked to stand again as a councillor next year for in, in a part of Lewisham where I stood before I haven't decided yet but I believe it may be a good thing leading up to 2020 my plan was 2020 to go for a seat in the House of Parliament, right? And we all must have a dream and a vision. And I say these things sometimes because we've got to be pioneers, pioneers and legacy bearers. Legacy bearers are persons that create legacies based on their life and their lifestyle. Legacy bearers, very important. So back to what we're saying now. Any more questions? I can take it at the same time. So. So, so deal makers is one of the things that um, members of parliament and um, parties are trying to do. Um, um, they say 
in 20 if, if, if it has happened before that is that another thing yes if it has happened before um, one part of the country where electoral deeds have been used for is Northern Ireland. Let's use Northern Ireland, for example. In 2015, the Democratic Unionist Party, DUP, and the UUP, the Ulster Unionist Party, agreed a pact not to stand against each other in four constituencies Belfast, North Belfast, East, Farmerjee, South Tyrone, and New and Armagee. The deal was pretty successful. The Unionist candidate um, won in three of the four. You know? This, you know, and the impact, and and what the impact of Brexit is that the rest of the UK, this kind of deal has been very rare in recent years. But it looks as though there'll be more cooperation between parties this time, and and this is what is happening. This creating cooperation. Um, I just see a question. The only thing guaranteed in life is change today. You hear, you hear tomorrow. You not, you not one day rich, the next day poor. One day we poor, the next day we are vegetarian. One day we are pork, the next day we are veggies and bread. And I'm always eating pork, yeah? I'm a, I love my jerk pork. So let me just sit up right there, okay? Um, <laughs> um, so, good point, David. Good point, yeah. So, one reason for Brexit, it's a crucial issue for all of the parties. And significantly, um, parties are clearly divided into two camps. So, it is like this election, what we are seeing is a battle of the Brexit factors. A battle of the Brexit factors. You keep our standing aside in Christchurch and Bournemouth and West in Kettering. They have gone further by reaching a memorandum of understanding. Yeah. With Conservative MP, the deal includes a plan for a regular form where Mr. Holborn will meet UKIP members if he's re-elected. So you got also tactically, and I believe UKIP, you know, wants to leave the um, the EU. So therefore. It is in their best interest to somehow support candidates who are actually aiming for leaving the EU. Now, people say that the Conservative is a Brexit party, but I, I, I tell you this: I beg to disagree. The the because majority of Conservative MPs did not vote for Brexit, you know, in a way, or stand for Brexit. Theresa May was anti-Brexit; she was pro. EU. David Cameron, George Osborne were anti-Brexit. They were pro-EU. Lots of Labour Party member, uh, members of Parliament, Kate Hoey, for argument's sake, of Vauxhall, they were pro-Brexit. Yeah? So therefore, what is what has happened is a simple thing. This is what has happened now, is that because the government which is in power, the Conservative government, have to and should actually listen to the will of the people based on the vote, we call it the democratic process. Many people say there's no real democracy these days. And and that's a question, ladies and gentlemen. Do you believe that there's real democracy this day? Do you do you believe in that? If there is real democracy. Many people say there's no real democracy these days. Right? And 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 by virtue of such, by virtue of such, what you're seeing now is the government respecting the wishes of the outcome and this is it the wishes of the outcome of an election or let's say a referendum respecting respect is a powerful word respecting something doesn't mean to say you agree with it respecting something is simply saying that you honor because guess what if one day something comes in your favor on a particular election you would hope that it would be respected as well. And nothing lasts forever. David, I agree. Nothing lasts forever because today is Brexit. Yeah. The Conservatives under, underestimated the UK population. Um, Ian, you got to explain that to me when you say the Conservatives underestimated the UK population. In what respect? In respect, yeah. Um, I think many politicians underestimate the people at the same time. Hi David, how are you buddy? You know, So explain what you mean by underestimated the UK population. Um, so, so therefore, the, the, key, the, key, the key thing is that the, the wishes of the outcome of an election, the wishes or the outcome of a referendum 
is the key and most important thing. It doesn't have to be agreed with, right? It, one don't have to agree with it, but it is about respecting it. And that is why I have issues when I see like Gina Miller trying to change the flow of certain things. When I see Richard Branson coming out of Nectar Island and uh, flying into the UK after evading taxes and everything, trying to tell people what to do. That when Barack Obama comes and say people must remain Brexit and stuff like that, you know, every country and every people have a right to determine their own direction, and that outcome is what should be respected. Now, four years, five years later, that can be overturned. Yes, Brexit can be overturned, or be well, if anything like that, because it is not uncharted waters. And I guess from listening to me, you might sense that I'm sort of leaning towards a Brexit. Well, I did vote Brexit. Yes, uh, yes, yes, I did vote Brexit. Yes, yes, I, I'm, a, I'm a black man. I'm from Jamaica. Yes, I'm an immigrant. Yeah, and I vote Brexit. How can that be? Crazy. You're a nutter. How can that be? Oh, you are this, you are that. Okay, so what? Are you finished now? Thank you very much. Moving on. <laughs> you know, sorry, I went through all of that before, you know. And I, I just believe in being transparent. I believe when you're being transparent and you say it as it is, you are in a better position to deal and to address things than trying to stay on the sideline and being what you're not for the sake of getting everybody to like you, to like your views or whatever like that. I believe it's so important, you know, that one actually really be transparent. The Conservative Party was hoping that... No, Mark, actually, no, no. The Conservative Party was not hoping that the country would vote to stay. David Cameron and George Osborne was hoping that the country would vote to stay. That's a big difference. David Cameron and George Osborne is not the Conservative Party. Um, um, Nick Clegg, Vince Cable are not the Lib Dem Party. Nigel Farage, we can say, is the UKIP. <laughs> that is, that is UKIP. Nigel Farage is UKIP. Right, and you can see this clearly that um, Jeremy Corbyn is not the Labour Party. So let's get this right here now. And this is my view: David Cameron and George Osborne is not and was not the Conservative Party. They were the figurehead, because if you remember, at the same time, people were free to vote. I am a member of the Conservative Party. I voted Brexit. So there was not a party particular line to say that the party should go a particular way. Remember, Boris Johnson. Remember, different members, there are, there are different things. Different, different, um, the other lady who was, who was vying to be the prime minister as well, against her. They were the figurehead. Right. Guys, I... I lost you there for a second. I lost you there for a second. I hope I'm back. Are you? Can you see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, David. I mean, you know, I, I believe that David didn't have to resign. Personally speaking, I know he resigned the next day, but he never had to resign because he said he would have accepted the decision and he would have triggered Article Fifty and just get moving. So he made a decision to resign. And, and I guess, in a way, sometimes it can be right because. Um, it would be undermining of his position during that time really and it would more like leading to a transition and uh and because the conservative party tend to be a party that don't like sometimes having all these fights so they just appointed and um tr thrown and thrown theresa may as the party leader um so yes so uh, I, it, it it was you know they would have they would have, have a hard time there and deep down deep down i believe david cameron and joy but these guys were and they were, they were brexiters really but they, they were playing a gamble. Everything is a gamble, is a deal, yeah. Mike Lawrence, you're saying, good afternoon. The government and establishment weren't surprised that the British public voted to leave the EU. Yeah. They weren't, they were, they were, yes, 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 they were, they, they were surprised, even Boris. And yeah, I believe they were surprised. But I wasn't surprised, actually, you know. But they were surprised. They were surprised. And, 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 and that is why the polls, I, I talk about the polls recently. Guys, I thought I, I thought I lost you there for a second, and uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's the holidays and everybody's doing um, Facebook Live or whatever like that. But I keep losing my losing my. Can you 
can you can you see what did we lose selection a while ago? Given that it's likely that Theresa May took the polls in the country when when deciding to call a snap election, what are your views on the recent poll that showed the guy? Well, you know, David, I'll be very honest. I'll be very honest. I'm a concert, but I'll be very honest. I never put anything past underdogs. And you know my saying at all times. I love underdogs. Anything can happen in this election. Anything can happen. Why? I believe the polls would narrow. I believe that the Theresa May will win. But not by the margin at what we are seeing now. Because when, when you talk about elections and ground swells, anything can happen at a particular moment. Anything. There can be a dead cat thrown in the whole thing. And I said, I said, somebody said, don't underestimate the coming together of forces to dethrone a party. So let, I'll say this now. I will not be surprised if David Cameron, if, if Jeremy Corbyn win. I will not be surprised if Theresa May win. But one thing that I'll be surprised, if anything, if they thwart the Brexit process. And that would be a calamity. Because what we are doing is disrespecting the wishes of the outcome of a particular legal election. That is what I'll be surprised by. Because at the end of the day, persons, if the result was to remain in the EU, persons from the other side, or persons with the, or, or are pro-remainers, would be appreciative if persons respect that outcome. So likewise, persons should respect the outcome as well of the referendum. That's my view. Clearly right there. Clearly said it there. Okay? But, as you said, David, ladies and gentlemen in Instagram land, good afternoon. A question that came up was, given that it is likely that Theresa May took the polls into consideration when deciding to call a snap election, what are your views on the recent poll that showed the gap closing between Corbyn? And my view is that I'm not surprised. I believe that in any election, I mean, look at Le Pen, classic example. Le Pen and uh, Macron, the gaps are closing there. There's a massive swing, but the gaps are closing. May the 8th. A day in politics can do anything. All right? So I'm not surprised. And personally, if it was me, I, I always say to people all the while that there's no need sometimes to seek a mandate when there's a change of leadership for a party because people did not vote for that particular members of parliament to become the party leader. They voted for the policies of the government. It is not like the American system and the American system, which clearly sets out that you vote directly for the president. And of course, as we know in elections, that if a president gets killed or whatever, normally the vice president becomes the, like, the, the thing and they live through the process. But the thing with American election is that you cannot go more than eight years, if anything like that, right? So, so that's a key thing. So I've got a very um, open mind. In, I've got a very open mind in that respect, um, David, and, and I'm being fair. That's my political analysis. I believe Theresa May will win, but I believe that anything can happen. The polls can close in. Deals could be made, as I'm, as the discussion tonight is about deals. Um, but I believe that the Conservative Party will win, and I believe the Conservative Party will win again um, in the next election, um, but on the basis that they remove Jeremy Corbyn. Because at the same time, what my view is and my thinking is that silently within the Labour Party, there are forces who are wanting the Labour Party to lose to kick Jeremy Corbyn out. To say, listen boss, listen, you are not making it happen. Right? Remember, you know, the thing about Jeremy Corbyn, which I like, is though, that guy's focus and result, man. That guy sat there 30 years or so on the back benches there, man. He's seen so many leaders. He's seen so many things, you know. And maybe, maybe he served his time. He, he bring that, gro that ground swell, you know. But maybe he's not the man to take it into the next level. Think about um, John Smith, who passed away just before Tony Blair came in. John Smith held it, and 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 Tony Blair, on that legacy, on that foundation, was able to trigger in um, uh, the Blairites period, the era of the Blairites. And therefore, Jeremy Corbyn, I believe, is someone who is 
doing you see the next leader for the um, Labour Party will be someone that will pull the party together and closing right because the ground swell from David and the people who are disenchant disenchanted when they're coming together that person will have a power base but then at the same time Theresa May may not be there and the, con and, and the conservative party could start you know so anything could happen so back to deals progressive alliances before we go Brexit isn't the only issue the Green Party is also seeking to support for what they call a progressive alliance co-leaders Caroline Lucas and Jonathan Bartley have written to Labour and the Lib Dem calling for a meeting to discuss ways to beat the Tories at the general election and deliver a fair voting system. Remember what I said? Remember what I said? What they're wanting to do is to just get the Tories out, no matter what cost. Hither Murray, agree. But he has, a, he has agreed to leave if he loses. His loss would be because he couldn't unite a morning party. Okay. Oh, either, either. Uh, has he agreed? Okay, that's fantastic. Okay. I never knew that he has agreed. Um, I thought people were saying he's going to be there for a long time. He has a good, he, he has lost it because he couldn't unite a morning party. Yeah, you know, and you know, you know. Talk about. Let's go back to to Jeremy Corbyn. But I believe they missed a trick. The Labour Party completely missed a trick. Really, what they should really do, and this is for them and for Labour Party members, unite behind Jeremy Corbyn. Unite behind him. How should I say this? Yeah, unite. This is this is this is free. You know, who knows? I hope they're not listening. Unite behind him, get behind him, rally behind him, support it, get him in, and blah blah blah. And then through the political process, you know, within your party, then move on, you know. You know, you know, Heather Mar okay, you're from the state, so oh, fantastic, great, great. Where are people coming? Actually, um, if people can tell me where they are from, that would be great. It would be good to see your comments as to where you're from. Instagram land, what country are you from, where are you? It would be good to sort of have an idea. Because I know I get some messages sometimes from persons to say that by watching this feed, sometimes they get a sort of different perspective on the political thing. Now, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not um, the, the, the best political punter or so, um, but I sometimes have a, I sort of have a, my hands on the, the ground in certain things. And uh, but a lot of what I get is because of my mind that thinks through things and don't just accept things to a certain way. Uh, so back to the progressive bit. Lib Dems in Brighton have agreed to. Uh, so what we said about is that some leaders are writing to some leaders to say, "Listen, let's make a deal." Um, and what I said earlier, that's been rebuffed at the national level, but in some places, local parties have decided to cooperate. It's like some unwritten agreement, unwritten agreement, you know. Um, Lib Dems in Brighton agreed, I said this earlier, agreed to stand aside in the Greens' only seat, Brighton in Pavilion. Former Lib Dem member, MP Servings Cable, who is seeking re election, has tweeted his support for the idea. Right? I've urged Brighton and Lib Dem to back good progressive Green when they meet on Wednesday. See? They are seeking deals. Right? But actually, Brighton won't make a big difference because Brighton has always been um, green. It's been green for a while. So, Brighton is the most liberal place, you know what I'm saying? If you know what I'm saying, yeah. Heather Marie, you said, but still can vote in the UK elections as I'm within the threshold and still pay taxes. Fantastic. You know. Now that's 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 another thing. You you are able to you're in the States and you're able to vote in election in the UK. I see lots of French people are lining up to vote in the election for France recently. And I keep saying to Jamaica as well, and I've been talking about that for Jamaica from that perspective that Jamaicans should be able to vote in general elections. That is if they are taxpayers, as you say, Heather Murray. That is if they um, have their uh, nationals of Jamaica still. That is if they are maybe passing through the UK for three months and a snap election is called, they should be able to vote here by going through the embassy, as many people do. Um, so that, that's great that you can do that, and that's fantastic. That is really powerful. That's the whole process of democracy as well. So back to the deal. So all these deals now which are being formed, this, this discussion about deals, why are deals being made? And we all know deals. Uh, you know, you watch, you watch um, what's your name, um, the scandal, um, the, the Miss Pope. It's about deals. Everybody's creating deals. Um, um, Mr. Uh, the Art of Deal, um, the Donald Trump. The, um, the different books, I'm trying to look at a particular book which I have there, where is it, you know? But different deals have, have been made um, in many ways in creating election results. 
Mike Lawrence, you're saying, do you think Theresa May should give Scotland a vote for their independence sooner rather than later? Um, do I think so? Um, do you think Theresa May, this is a question Instagram land um, from Facebook, do you think Theresa May should give Scotland a vote for their independence sooner rather than later? You know what? Honestly speaking, I don't think Scotland should be blocked in anything. And every time I think of Scotland, I think of Mel Gibson lifting up their quilt at the time to the English soldiers at the time. You know, Braveheart. <laughs> There's always this history with Scotland. I'm surprised that Scotland is still a part of the UK after all these years. I personally think that they should get their vote. But I believe at this time, while the Brexit arrangement is going through, maybe it's a bit somewhat, the timing is not right. The timing is not right, that's what I think. But they should have. But again, at the same time, one starts to wonder, is this a, a, a ideological thing for, um, what's her name, Nicola Sturgeon? Because just recently they had a, a referendum and the people voted that they want to remain in the UK. Um, either Murray, you don't have to be paying taxes. There's a threshold in the terms of time you go via the last council you live in for, for anyone interested. Okay, Heather Murray, that is, that is for the UK. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 Mike. Um, yeah, I, I think I think the timing is somewhat a, a bit off. I, I think the timing is a bit off, and I believe that Teresa um, um, Nicola Sturgeon is is on a quest um, with the push from her legacy bearer. I call him Alex Salmon in trying to um, thwart the whole Brexit process, really, because it, it is like, and this is it: is that like you'll want a referendum, want a referendum to get your result that you want and if you don't get that result that you want you want another referendum and you want it so when do you stop how do you respect he's having a good holiday as well um so listen guys guys i'm gonna wrap up very soon because somehow i'm losing the the richard branson and virgin is messing up things you know as you can see i'm sort of having this anti-virgin thing you know what i'm saying um uh, it's personal at the same time because uh you know Patricia, how are you? Good. So, anyhow, so 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 the art of a deal. The art of a deal. Not about um, Mr. Mr. Um, Trump, but the the whole thing is about the deals. Deals. Everybody is making deals, and this election is going to be a deal making election. That's what I see. It's going to be a deal making election, trying to oust the Conservative Party. That's what it's going to be, trying to oust. The conservative party so everybody's going to try to make deal and that is trying to achieve a brexit result which they did not get and um and that's what it's going to be that's what that's what's going to be now if if you want to see some sort of different angle on the election follow what are the next few weeks as well in about seven days or so the party manifestos will be coming out from the different political parties and once these manifestos are out then that's going to be a world game again of discussions we're talking about health we're talking about transportation we're talking about taxes we're talking i mean persons who are low comes and do agents work you might be feeling the thing with the ir35 and all those sort of things um so there are many different rafts of different things trident all different aspects and that should really put brexit to a level a lower level because everything now is Brexit, but once the party manifestos come out, we can now start to look at different party policies. And once we analyze the party policies, then we can say from a local level what it benefits to me. How what what is the talk about community care, mental health, issues like um in, in the community with different funding for young people. We're going on to the next season of uh, summer coming up. We have seen knife crime as well. And we're saying, what is it for the young people as well? Our young people, will there be policies that somehow enable young people? One of the things I'm gonna do, check this out. Uh, I'm speaking to a, a school. I got some young people, which I sort of support. Uh, I'm speaking to a school, an academy, to get a, 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 a discussion with some young people, 18 years up. Um, about politics and what they think about politics so i'm waiting for the the this headmaster to approve it and then we're going to the school my team and have a discussion with young people and the advent of elections what they mean because uh i believe young people are very astute i believe young people are sometimes the conscience of a nation and i believe that young people need to be encouraged to vote 
and not to be seen it as a big people thing really I don't know what you views on that um, so that's it and as I said looking for some researchers persons who may be interested funnily I got two persons from Jamaica who actually want to help me with research and I say are you sure you know where I'm from and they say yeah I know you're from the UK but we like what you're doing young people there want to help me with research about some of the political things and some of the questions that's why when I'm doing the show sometimes I couldn't just do it by myself I got people who support and give their time because they believe in the cause of it as well as I said I'm conservative but I try to give a balance and try not to be dogmatic and I believe that persons should be uh, align themselves or not to a political party because guess what you're going to be seeing some members of parliament no you're going to see some political candidates prospective parliamentary candidates coming and knocking to your door you've never seen them before you don't know who they are from Jack and you're going to say hey where you come from who you what's your name you know and it'd be so great to find out how did they how were they selected how were you, how did you not know I you, you could be saying hang on a second I know somebody else that I would like to how can I how couldn't I have put forward somebody else who is this geezer he doesn't even live in the area how can he be imposed on me now I'm stuck now I really want to vote Labour but I don't like this guy I don't know this guy and there's this conservative guy which I see in the area all the while he's a great guy I've seen him around now I'm torn I'm torn now between the person that I know who's a great guy and this person which they have imposed on me but I want Jeremy Corbyn but I don't like this person who is a Labour person I don't like him I don't know him I see the conservative guy I'm using the example but I like him but I don't want Theresa May how do you vote there think about that think about that how do you vote in a situation like that those are some of the challenging things about voting right think about those things ladies and gentlemen so finally remember subscribe to this channel like my um, Facebook page like my Silburn TV the UK page um, my YouTube page subscribe to you got I got my website which is silburn.com um, you know Instagram as well that is going crazy lots of people adding on Instagram got two great shows recently with Paul McKenzie we discussed knife crime business recently um, um, I got uh, V Roberts we talk about branding fantastic thing about branding remember your brand is you whoever you are if you're branding your branding is you you, you market your brand you advertise your brand you PR your brand and make sure you are you are there and also this Saturday I'm going to have Andrea Corbett mental health issue where she used lifting weights power weights going to the gym and being a bodybuilder to break her through mental health or she would have been history okay so mental health is an issue which coincidentally is in the news but from a community perspective as well so ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for joining Instagram land all the people over there it's great having you wow 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 that's the thing with Instagram you don't know who the persons are because of all these things um, Jeff Munir, Lyndon Wizard, hey, Christina Mara, Adi George, Roger, Mopinia, Faith Walker, hey, Walker Cloud, fantastic guys on Facebook, nice, thank you so much. And um, of course, I'll be responding on the replay. Any questions? Sorry about some of the hiccup as well. Uh, I, I'm calling, I'm putting cases on Instagram, on, on, on Virgin. Actually, they're going to be sending on something next week. I'm putting cases out on Virgin. I'm putting cases out on Talk Talk. I've got two broadband providers, and yet I'm in my house and somehow having freezing. Can you believe that? That's a shame. Let's put cases out on these guys. All right, we need better service, strong service. Okay, subscribe, like to the Silburn Show. Let's make this uh, a top-notch thing, top-notch, and top-notch is only because of you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and remember, believe in yourself first. That's my word for this week, last week. Which was, believe in yourself first. Nobody will believe in you until you believe in yourself first. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.